I've found or I've seen that I really quite like. And I feel that it's um, part of what I want to do is, is just find things that I like and show them to you. And you never know where they'll crop up or how you'll be able to use them. But I feel that it's what I do anyway, so I might as well share it. And then there's something, I, I believe all our brains store it. And someday you'll just kind of go, oh, that would work really well. And I'm trying to analyze what is it that I like and what am I, what is stopping me from scrolling on Instagram? What are the things I'm responding to without thinking? So um, these are the kind of things I've just found, which I quite like. And so here we go. So um, first up, this was a, a series of photographs by Doris Mitch called Locked Up, Looking Up. And they're kind of these weird times lapse but they're static still photos of the sky and i know that it, it's i just was so surprised i couldn't work out what they were when i first saw them but i quite like the idea of this sort of <laughs> he's taking lots of photos but they almost they look really surreal and it's not that i mean i that, that i can provide the links to all these but it's not as though it's you know I, once you've seen it i understand it but visually i'd not seen anything like this before so it was just that thing of I wanted to see, could I find some interesting photography? And there's a load of these that they've, they've done. And I've really, really kind of, I just appreciate kind of the difference of just seeing something which looks very bizarre and unusual. So that was a kind of the first one. Uh, next up was this design uh, by Leah Burnett for the Smith restaurant. And it's worth looking at the case study. So this is the menu. And I like it because it's kind of half design, half advertising. So when you go, you have like a, what looks like almost like a mini newspaper as the menu. And as you can see on the left, it's kind of, they do brunch your way and they have loads of these. They have like bacon that goes from like almost raw to really crispy. They've got toast and how burnt you like it. And I really like that thing of actually, yeah, we all eat the same things, but we're quite fussy about how we like them. Like the Goldilocks thing, you know, it's like, how do you like your porridge? And I thought as a sort of graphic execution, it was really nicely done. It's that, it's that beautiful synergy between like uh, an idea and an execution and graphic design. And you kind of feel I'd probably want to fold this up and take it home if I'd eaten there. So you've got the menu on the left and then you've got, you know, like on the flip side, you've got some sort of graphic image. I've only picked a couple here, but all of them are really interesting and quite good. And it is simply just like different ways to have breakfast and that kind of time lapse. Um, and it's yeah it's, it's a really nicely done the beautiful typography and it's just a really interesting I think it's a really innovative take on a menu which feels really nice uh, and actually does illustrate that sort of uh, well-known kind of yeah actually how do I like my eggs we're asked it all the time you don't place too much thought on it but having worked having served lots of breakfast in my time I totally get this so this resonates um, this was a project actually I think it might have been by Leah Burnett as well but this is called Ikea cook this page and this, again, is, is, is beautiful kind of design functionality and graphic design all coming together. So I love the fact that they've kind of turned the recipe into an IKEA like flat pack kind of project. Um, and everything about it is beautifully simple. Even the parchment paper the instructions are on become the paper that you cook the meal in. And I do kind of like the identikit feel to this and the sort of rather dry IKEA drawings. And I really, so it's just this thing of, Again, it, it's beautiful design that elevates a functionality, but it's also got kind of quite an enjoyable idea in it as well. So I wanted to share that because I think even down the, to the photography, it's really simple. And I just thought it was just a beautiful execution of like you're balancing, like I said, design and ideas and all of that together. Um, this was Strange Love Water by Mark's Design. And I, it's these strange kind of, it almost is like a, like a fax, sort of these old fashioned, I say old fashioned, but years ago when people were sort of making pictures out of letters, probably the original emoji. But what I quite liked about it was the art direction. Uh, I probably would have lost the cable on the TV, you now I look at it fresh, but um, the whole campaign is quite interesting from a drinks brand. And I'm certainly seeing, I've seen it a lot with um, kind of, I don't know what to describe it, but it's like, like, uh, is it beaver neck oil he's got craft brews where you're getting a lot of like they look almost like kids drinks which is quite strange but the the packaging is really expressive and I, I think that's really good so when I again Mark's design do some really nice work and I felt that actually just seeing this um, from a design point of view it's quite neat and quite orderly which I quite like but I, I really enjoyed that kind of execution of trying to do something slightly different with sparkling water that isn't just photos of the product all the time and some sort of gradient backdrop 
and then the art direction around it, like the pouring can on the TV, when you break into the whole case study itself, it's quite interesting and just a bit more unusual. And I like that the way they've considered everything, even from the check pattern in the background to elevate this and really bring the brand uh, together. This is Manteca or Mantega. Uh, it's a combination typeface. Uh, it's on Creative Market. Um, the reason why I wanted to showcase is I've definitely seen this as an emerging trend where you're getting a sans serif and a serif typeface together. Um, it works particularly well, things like fashion. And I think it's one of those ones that you can, there is another typeface which does a similar thing. And depending on whether you've got it capitalized or not, it will pick a serif or sans serif for you. And I tend to feel that um, this is going to burn out quick, but as a style and a way of elevating editorial fashion, particularly, it's an interesting technique. And what's useful is when it's um, provided for you in a typeface already done, it makes everything better because it's already been typeset for you. So you don't have to think too hard about that. You're not, you know, setting each letter individually. So I think that I've certainly seen this used a couple of times. Um, I think, it, like I said, it's an emerging trend, certainly, but I wanted to showcase it because if you were to buy it for like 10 to $15 and use it on certain projects that want to have brands, certainly with a bit more personality, definitely geared toward a younger market, this is kind of perfect. You know, there's, there's no coincidence for the demo, they've used a sort of fake fashion shoot. But as a technique, I think that works particularly well for like logo types as well, because you can inject personality and, and visual distinctiveness just by simply switching up the typeface. This is pizza time copy, which I think if I click it, it should, there you go. So you've got the actual box itself is a clock. So each of them are different, you know, because what they're saying is you can have pizza at any time. And then the way, the reason why I liked it, it was simply because I like the copy on the right, as in it's a pizza box, which is quite minimalist and stylish, but I quite like the fact you've got different, everyone has pizza at different times. Some people will say, oh, I prefer it cold. I prefer it the morning after. Um, and it's just that thing of things like 8 a.m. because breakfast is the most, time, most important pizza of the day, you know, 8 p.m. because you're hopeless romantic. I really like the kind of all the storytelling associated with, when you have your pizza and what that means to you and what the life you're leading. And I really like the simple engagement factor of if you're trying to get people in, engaged in sort of pizza, it's, it's so common. So how can we freshen that up and really talk to people? And it reminds me, um, there's a really good Instagram account called We're Not Really Strangers, which has really beautiful uh, typographically led, very emotive uh, kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's very type driven like in the landscape, but it'll be, it'll be, it's really, it really hits home some of the emotive language and they actually, it's like um, a board game. Uh, hold on one second. I got this from America, this is what it is, but it, it's these uh, cards that you're asked, you're meant to ask each other that are kind of meant to provoke very thought and meaningful conversations. And like, when you read about it, it's like can people who have like, they end up crying. It's quite intense, but I really was curious, but their social media, their Instagram is excellent. And I, I've often been on there and you're going, God, you're reading my mind. So like when Rachel said about that overwhelmed feeling, there's that thing of like, you're, there'll be captions in there that will be really powerful. So I really like that. And this tonally, I love that the, all of the personality came across in the copy um, and quite a simple design. This was, um, this is called Ideas in Progress, I think by Show Package. And I just wanted to like this because I really like this kind of modern way of expressing itself with full of personality. So I don't know if this should be a, a video that will play. I'm not sure if that's here. And I just, when I looked at this, I just felt that I, I really liked that this is very modern, it's kind of techy, but I did like everything about it from the typography and how that's put together, the colors are beautiful. The photography is great and it makes these really kind of stark expressive images of the people involved in the project. And uh, the visual language on display here was really unique and dynamic. And I've certainly seen similar stuff done by companies like Google, but without this like attention to detail and charm. So like I said, it's a massive case study on, on Behance or Behance, but it's really beautiful and stand out. And I really like the sort of 
simplicity of all the sort of starburst and everything and that visual language and it just struck me as like I'm not quite sure what this is but it's got so much character that it it kept recurring in my Pinterest feed so I must have been drawn to it and particularly that orange picture of that guy with the sort of star behind it I just thought this is a really interesting way of expressing a brand and communicating with the language and I'll replay it again but that combination of letters and shapes and then the animated lines to give it character um, it just felt to me like an interesting identity that would work really well, particularly for a young tech brand who was looking to kind of be a bit different. Because I know that young tech brands, it's very, so easy to fall into kind of a cliched look and feel. So I thought that was quite strong. Um, and then this is uh, nuts. This is a drone show, which is this company that does drones. And I'll play the video because it's genuinely they did these 300 drones. Uh, I don't know if you can hear the, I'll just turn the sound off. You just need to look at it. And I just think this is amazing and so captivating. And did you know what? So much better than fireworks. And when you think about it, now you're limited by your creativity of what you can do. I mean, if I saw that in the sky, that would just blow my mind as far as that. I feel like I'm going to be beamed up by something. So visually, when I saw this on Instagram, I was like, this is, this is bonkers because it's so captivating and so clever and then you're like well actually now we think about it we could do so much and I think with a lot of the things I want to show you like with the fireball whiskey you're kind of like okay so what could we do visually that can be recreated because it's all programmable so in theory if you can think of it they should be able to program it and actually this is this weird thing of like it's fireworks and the bat signal and even more I mean look you've got a car there I mean it's nuts so I do believe that you're limited by your creativity but if you're doing if you can combine a big visual stunt with a meaningful message, then I think it can really make a difference. So I wanted to show that because I just thought that was it's just mad. Um, and they have loads of them. You know, there's an R2D2 one there. So it's kind of, there's so much that can be done, which I wasn't aware of, but I thought that was really interesting. Um, and that was it really. So I will just check on, I think there we go.